Hey guys, Galaxy Studios here with quite an interesting video for me to make. Until this year, I had never played Terraria. The aggressive comparisons between it and Minecraft turned me off from it when I was a stupid 10 year old, and until recently, the game didn't catch my attention, with the exception of four Geometry Dash levels and the Calamity Mods soundtrack getting a feature on Pokemon Challenges. And then, someone I first encountered on a Pokemon content creator's Bloons Tower Defense 6 stream uploaded a pretty long video. You might have heard of it, it's about him beating Calamity Master Death Hardcore. Congratulations to Prisma Ace for recently becoming the first person in the world to be Calamity's Bountiful Harvest update on Master Death Hardcore! I've watched that video a lot since then. One thing led to another, and I decided to try out Terraria. Honestly, I had a lot of fun with my first playthrough on Classic Mode, although my builds weren't exactly optimal. And as I was doing my second playthrough on Expert Mode, I got the idea for this video. I do not know which bosses are fan favorites or which are disliked more than others, and this list is purely my opinion based on the three playthroughs of this game I've done as of the time of writing the script. I'm mainly basing this on how fun the bosses were for me to fight, with other factors including the atmosphere and presentation of the fight, as well as the loot table and the resources the boss unlocks. With that said, let's jump right in. Just watch Sorbet Cafe's video on why Deerclops is not fun in the slightest in expert mode. This boss is either very annoying or way too easy depending on when you fight it, and the reward is a loot table completely outclassed by the weapons immediately available in the portion of this game the boss is tiered for. At least the music is good. For a boss that used to be the game's finale, Golem is a very underwhelming fight, especially considering how much content this boss unlocks. It's the gateway to Martian Madness, the Tier 3 Old Ones Army, and the Lunar Events, and yet I have never even come remotely close to dying to this boss, ever. Loot table here, while good across the board, can be annoying to grind for, especially for Ranger players where getting at least two Eyes of the Golem is optimal. The worst part about this boss is the grinding you need to do before to prepare yourself for the post-Golem content. Grinding that doesn't even make a difference for this fight. You're going to win anyway. Honestly, the same applies here. Despite being the fight that kicks off the Lunar Events, the Lunatic Cultist is much, much weaker than every other post-Golem boss, and that includes Betsy and the Martian Saucer. The Phantasmal Dragon at least means this fight isn't nearly as brain-dead as Golem, and this is a nice prelude to the hardest part of the game, but it's pretty forgettable. One thing I really like about pre-hard mode bosses is that every boss except Skeletron and the Wall of Flesh can spawn naturally. King Slime spawning in the middle of a slime rain caught me completely off guard the first time it happened, and I actually died despite having Crimson Gear at that point. Despite this, King Slime isn't a mechanically interesting fight to me, nor is the loot that good, with the exception of the slimy saddle. Still, for the first boss in the game, it's a decent introduction. At this point, every boss in this list is at least good. Following up for Consort, Queen Slime's projectile spam is really something, though it has never felt too overwhelming to me. Maybe that's because I've always either kept my distance or went in with Hallowed Gear. The loot table for this boss is pretty interesting, with the Gelatinous Pillion being maybe the second best mount in the game, the Blade Staff being the best easily accessible early hard mode summon, and the Crystal Assassin Armor Set having some unique attributes that could make it viable for two of the three mech bosses. Speaking of which, I'm not a huge fan of the mech bosses in their current state. They're all good fights, but they either didn't leave much of an impression on me or too much of an impression on me, and the Destroyer definitely counts as the former. Although I've always fought this worm first, I've never lost to it once. And while it serves as a good introduction to hard mode and the probes can be overwhelming given the right circumstances, I haven't seen those circumstances once. The best thing I can say about the mechanical bosses is that their natural spawns have the potential to be terrifying, and most of the weapons crafted using the individual souls, in this case Mega Shark and Light Discs, are really cool and can be used for the next couple splits. The main flaw with this fight is that the only threat to a well-prepared build is the Laser Hand. Once that goes down, the fight's basically over. Despite all of that, this boss has left an impression on me by naturally spawning and killing me twice, and presentation-wise, this is an amazing way to upgrade Skeletron. I do think some way for the head to attack would have been a better expert mode upgrade than just a faster dash, but it's not that big of a loss. At least the flamethrower is good now. I have gotten thrashed by these eyeballs too many times. The annoying part of the twins to me is that the stuff that kills me feels inconvenient to dodge, that being Cursed Inferno and Spasmatism's Phase 2 dashes. This boss has killed me more than any other boss in the game, but I have gotten better at the fight recently, and managing both eyeballs and their changing movesets at various points of the fight has been fun on several occasions. Unfortunately, the individual rewards here are easily the weakest of the mechs, with the optic staff coming in dead last and me unfortunately knowing nothing about the magical heart. At the very least, every time I've beaten the twins, I have also gotten access to Chlorified Gear. So, that's something. This is the only pre-hard mode boss outside of the Wall of Flesh that can't spawn naturally and the one that gives access to the most rewards. 
Dungeon and Shadow Chest loot is the best loot you can get pre-hard mode, with this boss guarding access to the best weapon in pre-hard mode, the two best affordable pre-hard mode ranged weapons, and low opportunity cost knockback immunity. The resources unlocked by killing Skeletron alone make taking on this boss worth it, and the fight itself was pretty fun for me to learn. The expert mode change of adding homing skulls was a great decision to make sure the fight isn't over once the hands go down, and focusing down the hands has been fun to figure out every time I fight them. As the second to last boss of pre-hard mode, this is a good step up from what came before. As someone who really prefers Crimson Worlds, I've only ever fought this boss once. I tend to prefer Crimson because of the terrain being easier to navigate, but based on the one fight I've had with the Eater of Worlds, it's a very well presented fight and it forces the player to think about how they're going to fight it. The choice between the summon methods, as well as the fight location, whether to fight it underground to deal with the enclosed space, or fight it above ground to deal with the vile spit. Considering the content being this boss unlocks, which I'll get into later, the fact that this boss can be fought in several different ways is really cool to me. It rewards the player for thinking of a plan ahead of time. I've never lost to this boss, but that's because I knew it was coming. This is a boss that forces the player to utilize every option they have at their disposal. From the iconic Hellbridge building, to managing the Hungry, to the various ways of actually killing the thing, which for me usually boils down to the Night's Edge. The atmosphere surrounding this fight is fantastic, special shoutout to the Horrified debuff, and the loot table is fantastic, giving the player a head start into hard mode with an emblem and a weapon, as well as the Demon Heart, which I consider the second best expert mode exclusive item, beating out both the Shield of Cthulhu and Soaring Insignia. As what used to be the game's final boss, and the current ending of the game's first half, I think this fight does a fantastic job at closing a split of the game out. Eyes. Wide. Open. This is the evil biome fight I'm more familiar with, and managing the creepers is good enough, but the Brain of Cthulhu's main strength is its second phase complete with afterimages and teleportation. Much like the Eater, there's a choice of summoning method and fight location, though it isn't as much of a big deal. The biggest strength of the evil bosses for me, though, is what beating them unlocks. I consider the evil boss the Ender Terraria's early game, since the fight gives access to Hellstone and a whole new level of power with Molten Gear. The Meteorite and Old One's army are just the cherry on top. This boss marks the Ender Terraria's first quarter, and it does a pretty amazing job of that. As the introduction most players will have to Terraria bosses, this boss does an amazing job at showing the threats that the player will have to step up to, complete with showing its teeth in the second phase and a pretty neat expert mode change in the Chain Dash. It's not the most complicated fight, but it doesn't have to be. It's perhaps the most perfect example of the main motivation behind Terraria's progression. Find a way to make survival easier. With the best example of natural spawning in the entire game, and drops that point the player toward the evil biome along with giving them a head start in the evil biome to your gear, this boss is a motivation toward players to get stronger. Not to mention the Shield of Cthulhu, which I don't really use. This boss is the easiest in the game to fight accidentally. I have actually never fought this boss using the Abomination. The fight itself is mechanically interesting, with Queen Bee's three attacks all being fun to work around and the poison debuff making preparing for this fight interesting, especially if you fight her in her hive. As for the loot table, it's the reason why this is my favorite pre-hard mode boss. The two accessories this boss drops are both great and I've used both to fight the Wall of Flesh alongside Bee Nades, which is probably this boss's best drop. On top of that, the weapons, unlike Deerclops' drop, can actually maybe compete with Molten Gear. Overall, this boss, while optional, is always worth taking on in my opinion, and that combined with the well-designed fight itself makes it quite solidly my favorite pre hard mode boss. And the music's top-notch, obviously. This boss, stat-wise, is so head and shoulders above every other boss in the game that it's forced me to completely rethink my build on several occasions. The build of the pillars is 100% paid off here with a ridiculously complicated fight where the player has to take out all three of the Moonlord's eyes, then deal with invincible true eyes of Cthulhu while taking down the core. From the massive size of the boss to all the different attacks the player has to deal with, with the crown jewel being the phantasmal death ray, this is a fight I had to learn. At least until I figured out that a certain expert mode exclusive drop has an amazing matchup into this fight. But still, the Moonlord is a phenomenal way to close out Terraria. The fact that Duke Fishron is available premex is a huge plus for it in my book. Despite the Duke being tiered as post golem and me always fighting at post golem, this boss can very well be taken out in early hard mode with great rewards if you do. This boss as a loot table is phenomenal, fitting for a late game optional boss, providing perhaps the best wings in classic mode until the Moon Lord is defeated, and some insane weapons on top of that. As for the fight itself, Fishron's aggressive attack pattern, bubbles, and sharpnadoes can be a serious challenge for players even post golem. I would know. The second phase turns up the intensity even more, and the third phase? It might be my favorite phase of any boss in the game. And on top of all of that, I consider the Shrimpy Truffle 
to be the best expert mode exclusive drop in Terraria, surpassing the Shield of Cthulhu, Evil Biome Drops, Soaring Insignia, and even the Demon Heart. The reason? Well, the Demon Heart gives an extra accessory slot, Cute Fishron saves at least two. Such an absolute banger of a theme. Such a cool summoning method. Such a well-designed two-stage fight. This is the boss that unlocks the second half of hard mode, and she more than lives up to that status. As a significant step up over the mech bosses, this is a boss that requires the player to at least think about how they're going to defeat her. Building an arena and preparing my build has felt really rewarding every time I fought her. As for the loot table, though not every weapon is amazing, some are really, really good. And of course, she unlocks access to the jungle temple and the hard mode dungeon, and by extension, the event moves. Of course, there's one more thing that beating Plantera unlocks, and that's a certain boss. And if you've been paying attention, you know exactly who she is. I adore everything about this boss. From the summoning method, to the fight itself, to the presentation, to the loot table, to especially the music, this was always going to top my list. This fight is a visual spectacle even in vanilla, and is provided the backbone for some phenomenal modded content. Please look at the Radiance mod, I am begging you. The drops? The best weapon in the game, a sword with a great niche up until the pillars, a bow that seriously competes with the Tsunami and Aerial Bane, and Nightglow, which I have never used because I haven't played Mage yet. I also have yet to use the Stellar Tune or Terra Prisma. However, what I have used are the Empress Wings, which I consider the best wings until Moonlord is defeated when paired with her actual best drop, the Soaring Insignia. This accessory is so broken, Calamity had to nerf it to the ground. And on top of all of this, this fight has to come complete with my favorite song in the Terraria soundtrack. I have a feeling that this is a common pick, but I had to put it here. It's the Empress of Light. So that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time when I get back to hardcore content. And I'm not talking about a hardcore Nuzlocke. Bye, guys.